Welcome back, everybody, to the Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here on MLB The Show 20. Got a lot to talk about today. We've got a very eventful episode upcoming as we are continuing along with the month of September. Going to get a few more series done as we near the end of a regular season here in season number four. Our Pirates are 33 games above 500 at 88 and 55. Playoffs is a lock, but we are playing for seeding. And also, we got some minor league stuff to talk about as well. Both our AA and AAA teams are likely to make the minor league postseasons. So here's a quick look at the standings. There are a lot of teams who are really, really good this year. I mean, you got the Rays, the Indians, the Athletics, who all have won around two-thirds of their games, which is incredible. Very rarely do you see teams win two-thirds of their games at all, so having three of them do it in the same conference is very impressive. And then in the National League, it's a little bit more spaced out, but there are some teams who are really dominating at the top, like the Brewers, like us, like the Padres. The Rockies at the beginning of the season, now not so much, but they should still make a playoff spot. The only real division battle is our division and the NL East. The Nationals are probably going to win the East, but the Phillies are still in the race. But the closest division race left in baseball is us and Milwaukee. Currently, the Brewers are around two games ahead of us, so if we don't win the division, we'll probably still get a wild card, which isn't bad either. So I'm, we're going to talk about the AA and AAA teams first. We're not going to play any minor league games today, uh, although we will be reviewing each of their first playoff series. So here's the AA team, the Altoona Curve, who won the AA championship last year. Uh, currently, they are 90-49, and 49, which is really, really good. Got a lot of the young guys progressing. Koizumi Satoshi, who we signed from Japan a couple off seasons ago, he's been outstanding. Alexander Canario, Kiki Javere, Art Rosado, one of our draft picks last year. They have all been really good. And this team, Estevan Florial is hitting 335. He's a player I think we signed this past off season, so the bats are doing well. Uh, the pitching as well, led by our top prospect, Patrick Magana who will probably be a major leaguer next season. Maybe he'll be in the starting rotation. I'm not really sure yet, but he has had an outstanding season in AA. And then the rest of the rotation, the rest of the bullpen, they're all doing really well. This AA team looks locked and loaded for another championship, even though they are without a few of their core players from last year's team, including Pablo Cairo, who, of course, is now dominating in the majors. The AAA team isn't quite as good, 77-62, and 62, but still very solid. The AAA squad, the Indianapolis Indians, have not made the postseason yet in this series, so it is good to see them finally make a playoff run. Uh, this team isn't necessarily as known for their bats. You do got a few guys playing really well, though, like Casey Andrade, who we acquired in a trade midseason. That was the Brandon Waddle, Nico Goodrum trade. Uh, Drew Mendoza's playing pretty well. Rosel Herrera, Christian Kelly, Jorge Velasco, before he got hurt, was playing really well. So right now, this team is not quite as good as the AA squad compared to uh, the rest of their competition, but still a really good squad. Only four starters for now uh, entering the postseason. Remember, Mitch Keller was down here for around a month, but he is back with the big league club and then the bullpen as well. Got a lot of major league caliber relievers in this bullpen, and we do have quite a few free agents who are currently in our bullpen now, Rysel Iglesias, Pedro Baez, Michael Givens. So we'll probably see some of those AAA guys be in the majors next year. So now let's take a look at the Major League squad. You know how they're doing. A player I want to talk about real quick is O'Neill Cruz. Uh, if you haven't heard, O'Neill Cruz has been in the news lately in real life, and let's just say it's not for the right reasons. You can look up the details if you want. It is fairly disturbing. But all I'm going to say is I've waited for the day where someone who's in one of my series to, like, do something really bad. Well, let's just say today's that day. So, for right now, we're going to keep O'Neill Cruz because it is a video game, and we're going to pretend everybody is nice and it's fairy tale land with unicorns and cotton candy and all that. But if you do want to look uh, up what happened, once again, it is disturbing, but go at your own risk. <laughs> Uh, the rest of the lineup is looking good. Pretty much all of our lineup is on fire. The pitching rotation as well. The only starter not on fire is Santiago Osuna, who has had a really good rookie year, so I'm not too worried about that. The starting rotation is very different, remember. The only players who were in our opening day rotation this season were Jameson Tyone and Jordan Yamamoto. Uh, Brandon Waddell is no longer on the team. Obviously, he was traded to the Yankees, and Julio Urias and Mitch Keller were both really bad. 
So that prompted us to call up Santiago Osuna, move Adonis Medina to the starting role, and trading for Lance Lynn. The bullpen as well is looking good too. So as you can see, uh, the Indians and Curve would officially kick their postseason series off. We're not going to talk about the playoffs for them quite yet as we do have some games here against the Cardinals and Rockies. I also did a little simming of the minor league playoffs. Currently, Altoona is down 2-1 to one against the Akron Rubber Ducks, and the Indianapolis Indians are up 2-1, to one, I think, against the Toledo Mudhens. I could be wrong about that. So this is game four of a four-game series here at Coors Field. The 92-56 and 56 Pirates taking on the 82-67 and 67 Rockies. Currently, if the season ended today, these two teams would face off in the wild card game. So this might not be the last time these two teams see each other this season. This is game four of a four-game set. Pittsburgh has taken the first three. They're going for the clean sweep today. Ty Colbreth is on the mound for the Rockies. They have four of their five starters as lefties, which is kind of crazy. But, I mean, they're winning baseball games, so can't really complain. Here's Josh Bell up, runner on and one out, and he crushes it deep in a left field into the seats. It goes. Josh Bell with the dinger. That is his 41st of the year. Josh Bell has been on a tear the past month or so. He's hitting like 360 now, which is just wild. I mean, if he played like how he has in the past month or a full season, I wonder what his numbers would be because they would be insane. Lance Lynn is on the hill for the Pirates, obviously acquired this past July from the Rangers, and he has been a really solid acquisition, certainly better than Julio Urias and Mitch Keller as he strikes out the superstar third baseman, Nolan Arenado, to end the inning. Let's go top of the second. Pair of runners on, Lance Lynn going down for the bunt, and he is saved at first, runner out at second, however, so that'll lead to two outs. Runners on the corners here for the Venezuelan rookie, Pablo Cairo, who already has a base hit today, and this one does not look like it'll be a base hit. Popped out into right. Pablo Cairo now is in the top five for batting average in the National League. He did spend the first month of the season in the minors, but he has gotten enough bats to be qualified. What a rookie season he has had. Let's go to the bottom of the inning. Nice defensive play by O'Neill Cruz to get David Dahl out right there. Top of the third now, Wander Franco! unleashes this one into left field and that is an absolute nuke you might as well call him Kim John Un 440 feet probably one of Franco's longer home runs so far in his young major league career is that's the 18th home run this season for the young rookie a couple batters later Dylan Carlson up that ball does not look like it's deep enough to go over the fence but it will drop for an extra base hit Carlson obviously did not live up to expectations for most of this year. He has played very well the past month or so as he hits the double right there. Brian Reynolds now up with two outs, 2-2 two -two pitch. Swinging at a very low fastball. Probably should have just let that one go by. Instead, it'll be a ground out end of the inning, but still a successful inning as Pittsburgh is now at 3-0. Bottom three, here's Jonathan Villar going down on the cutter. Lance Lynn is pitching a perfect game so far. He has looked really, really good as here's the catcher, Dom Nunez. It goes down on the cutter as well. Let's advance to the top of the fourth now. Runner on, no outs for Francisco Mejia. Lost this one into left. Not sure if it's going to be deep enough at the track at the wall, and it's gone. And Pittsburgh will now make it 5 to nothing. Mejia with his 37th home run of the season as Pittsburgh extend their lead even more. Mejia has already passed his career high in home runs, so at this point he's playing with house money. As there is Pablo Cairo ripping a single off of the glove of Nolan Arenado. A few batters later, here's Josh Bell. Already has a two-run shot today. This time, uh, he does not appear to be successful. Does hit that one pretty deep into left center, but not deep enough as it is caught by David Dahl. Pirates, however, once again with a good inning as they lead it 5 to nothing. Bottom of the fourth now. Rockies trying to get a base runner, and they finally do as Edgar De La Cruz with the single, Benny Lenny unable to get to the ball quick enough. Runners on the corners and no outs now for Nolan Arenado. Deep ball in the center. Reynolds makes the play. However, De La Cruz will score. And the Rockies are finally on the board as it is now 5-1. to one. The shutout is no more. Let's see if they can try to make this lead a little bit bigger than it already is. Here's David Dahl with a runner on and one out. 
Single into left. Delano DeShields heading home. And he's going to make it with ease. Most runners wouldn't go there, but Delano DeShields is one of the fastest players in all of baseball. And he is safe pretty easily. Nomar Mazzara now up. Grounds this one to Franco to Cruz over to Bell from a 4-6-3 double play. Pittsburgh gets out of the jam, but... The Rockies do still score two nonetheless as we go to the fifth inning. Ryan Castellani is now into the game here for Colorado. He would breeze through the top of the fifth pretty easily as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Lance Lynn leaves a hanging curveball up in the zone, and Jonathan Villar will capitalize. Villar with his 23rd home run of the season. He used to be a power and speed guy, but is really developed some power into his game and is one of the more talented all-around hitters in baseball. There's Edgar De La Cruz with a walk. Manager definitely does not agree. He thought that ball was a strike, but it doesn't really matter because De La Cruz is gunned down trying to steal second. Don't want to mess with the arm of Francisco Mejia. Part-time ball player, full-time sniper. Mejia has one of the strongest arms in the majors. and You don't want to steal on him too often because he's got a rocket behind the dish. Ben Bowden is now in for Colorado. His ERA is in the threes. That's always a good thing. As here's the pinch hitter, Andrew McCutcheon lines this one fair in the left. That one could be extra bases as Mejia is hustling to third. He is safe. That'll be a double for McCutcheon. Pittsburgh is a pair of runners in scoring position with no out. If they don't score both of these runners, then this inning is a failure. Here's Pablo Cairo, single into center. Mejia scores. McCutcheon tries to get aggressive, and he is gunned down. Andrew McCutcheon got a little too antsy there and probably shouldn't have attempted to steal home. Good RBI single nonetheless, however, for Pablo Cairo. As we go to the following batter, it's Wander Franco, who had the home run earlier. This one will be a gapper into right center. McCutcheon obviously would have scored here, but, I mean, you can only play the what-if game so much. Cairo standing up scoring as he made it all the way from first. That'll be an RBI double for Wander Franco. And the Pirates now lead it 7-3 as we advance to the sixth. Lynn's day is done, and the flame-throwing Emmanuel Classe is into the game. He's had a very solid season. Here's Nomar Mazzara with 2-1 and 2 outs. Going to strike out on the 101 mile an hour curveball. Yeah, this guy throws pretty hard. On to the seventh now. Jeff Hoffman is in for Colorado. He's only pitched nine innings and has been fine in that short sample size. It will be a successful inning here for Hoffman as Benny Ling will fly out to second. The play is made by the yard. Seven to three remains your scores. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Here's Dom Nunez going a little oppo poppo. Into left, his 10th home run of the season. And the Rockies will make this game a little bit closer as it is now 7-4. On the 8th inning, the former All-Star with the Rays, Alex Colome, is in for the Rockies. Here's Pablo Cairo, 2-1 pitch. Grounds us to Nolan Arenado. Good 1-2-3 inning for Colome, who has had a really good season this year with Colorado, might I add. Let's go to the bottom of the inning now. Pedro Baez is in for Pittsburgh. He's had a down year. Might not be brought back this offseason since he is a free agent. He does strike out the line of DeShields right there. Nolan Arenado now up. Full count pitch, and he's going fishing. Didn't catch anything with that bait. Good inning from Baez. Let's go to the bottom of the ninth now. Ken Giles on for the save. Giles has not quite played as well as he did last year, but still a solid season. His first batter is David Dahl, and he's going to get this one barely over the fence in left. As he goes oppo poppo as well for his 17th home run of the season. The Rockies are clawing back into this one as it's 7-5. Likely won't matter as the Rockies will end this game with a ground out. Nice play by O'Neill Cruz. And the Pittsburgh Pirates win it 7-5. They sweep the Colorado Rockies. This is definitely good momentum for Pittsburgh. Winning four straight against likely a playoff team. A very good set of games here for Pittsburgh. The offense was great. Home runs for Mejia, Bell, and Franco. They all drove multiple runs in. Cairo, the other RBI. The pitching was okay. I mean, the Rockies only had six hits, which isn't a lot. They did score five. And as I said, good day for the bats all around for Pittsburgh. 14 hits, seven runs. Let's just say they took advantage of the altitude here in Coors Field as we would advance now to this Tampa Bay Rays series. And we've got some big news. Both minor league teams have won their series and will be advancing 
to the AA and AAA championships, respectively. Altoona came back down 2 0, and Indianapolis, meanwhile, nearly lost the series when they were up 2 0. So, very different ways of winning. For what it's worth, Altoona outscored uh, the Akron Rubber Ducks 19 1 in the final two games. That's pretty good. So, Altoona will be playing the New Hampshire Fisher Cats in their AA championship. And the Indianapolis Indians will be playing the Columbus Clippers. We'll talk more about those uh, championships in the next episode. But today, two games set here against the Tampa Bay Rays home at PNC Park. Overcast day here in this one. Pittsburgh ended up winning the first game of the series. So they're going for another clean sweep here. As it's for rookie Santiago Osuna on the mound for the Pirates. Obviously, these two teams made a very big trade in the offseason, sending Bo Bichette and Lazaro Armenteros to Tampa Bay in exchange for Wander Franco. Bo Bichette was already an established Major League player, whereas Armentero and, and Franco both made their Major League debuts this season, as Nate Lau going to open up the game with an RBI double. That'll drive in a run, and the Rays are quickly on the board. They lead it 1-0. Following batter, another former Pirate, it's Austin Meadows. He goes down looking. What could have been? Imagine if this Pirates team at Austin Meadows and Tyler Glasnow still. That'd be pretty incredible. Here is Denelson Lamette on the mound for Tampa Bay. This Rays team has an extremely deep pitching rotation. They have like multiple mid-80s guys in the bullpen, which is pretty incredible. As the first batter of the game, Brian Reynolds. Going to rip a double into left field. Good start for the Pittsburgh offense. Obviously, Tampa Bay started this game off of a run. Pittsburgh going to try to answer them. Unfortunately, they will be unsuccessful. Benny Ling ends the inning with a ground out over to second. I mean, you cannot have runners in scoring position with no outs and not score them. And that's unfortunately what happened for the Pirates. Let's go to the top of the second now. Renato Nunez leading things off for Tampa Bay. As this one goes into the right center gap over the fence for a solo shot. His 23rd home run of the season. The Rays are one of the first teams to 100 wins. They are certainly a really good squad, and they have proven to be a challenge so far for Santiago Osuna. He does strike out Donovan Casey right there as we go to the third. Here's DJ LeMayhu going to ground this one over to Benny Lang. Lang trying to get fancy with the throw, and LeMayhu is safe. However, didn't look like he was safe, and the Pirates will indeed challenge this call as it looks like the officials are going to have to review it, see if they made the right call on the field, or if this one's going to be an overturned. And as you can see, yeah, LeMayhew is out of there. Luckily, the umpires would agree the challenge is successful and the call is overturned. It's been a rough one for Pittsburgh's offense. They only have one hit today. That was the leadoff double by Brian Reynolds. Reynolds is going to say what I can do, I can do even better. His second double of the game... Now there's a runner on scoring position again, and once again, Pittsburgh will fail to capitalize as Josh Bell will fly out to center. The play is made by Bernardo Nieves to end the inning. Score remains 2-0 as we go to the fourth. Runner on here for Renata Nunez with the home run earlier. Instead, he's going to ground into the 4-6-3 double play. Pittsburgh's infield is more chemistry been a science project that would end the inning. Santiago Osuna started this game off slow, but has really pitched well these past couple of innings. Bottom four, the former top prospect in this Rays organization, Wander Franco up, and that'll be a single because Bo Bichette teleported uh, when he was trying to get the ball. I really don't know what that was, as Wander Franco will reach base because of the player he's replacing. Pablo Cairo trying to take advantage. That one looked like a danger. Instead, it goes foul. And instead, he will strike out on an outside slider. More blind than Helen Keller. That was an ugly pitch. I don't know why he swung at it. So Pittsburgh still a scoreless here in the bottom of the fifth, but that'll change. Francisco Mejia launches a bomb into right, and the Pirates will cut this lead in half. It's now 2-1. to one. Mejia with his 38th home run on the season. He is well on his way to hit the 40 marker, and that's where you only see some of the top hitters in baseball. What a season it has been. For Francisco Mejia, easily the best hitting catcher in the game. As there is Brian Reynolds striking out. Good pitch from Denelson Lamette. O'Neill Cruz as well. Goes down on the outside curveball as Lamette is pitching a gem through five innings, only allowing the one run. Top of the six now. Low is up at the plate. And he's going to ground into a 4 6 3 double play. How many 4 6 3s have we had today? It feels like a lot. But I mean, Pittsburgh's infield is playing well. 
Bottom six, it's been a quiet game for Josh Bell, who's on an 11-game hit streak at this moment. He's going to draw a walk, so that'll put a runner on and no outs for Benny Lane, who's had a quiet episode, and he is going to ground into a 3-6-2 double play. A lot of double plays in this game. It's weird. Top of the seventh now. Santiago Osuna is still in the game as he gets Gary Sanchez going down fishing. A nice pitch right there by Osuna, who has not allowed a run since the second inning. Two on, two outs now for Donovan Casey. Grounder to short. Cruz makes the play to first. And that'll end Santiago Osuna's day. Really good seven innings. He's either going to get the loss or the no decision, depending on what this Pirates lineup does the rest of the way. Tampa Bay with a pitching change of the row, and as Nick Anderson is in here for the bottom of the seventh. Two outs for the pinch hitter, Nico Goodrum. Deep ball in his center. It goes off the wall. Goodrum with a double. So Pittsburgh has a runner in scoring position for Brian Reynolds, who has played really well today. This is his time to shine, and he capitalizes. Single into right. Goodrum thought about going home, but will retreat back to third. That was probably the right call. He would have very easily been out. So now there are runners on the corners. Another pitching change for Tampa Bay. Colin Poche is in. I think they want to do some lefty on lefty here with O'Neill Cruz. Cruz is actually a little bit better against lefties, but they're... I guess the smart decision was made by Tampa Bay as he strikes out at a really bad pitch. On at the top of the eighth now, Wander Suero is in for Pittsburgh, coming in from an all-season deal at the Nationals. He's had a really good season this year as he gets Austin Meadows to go down looking. That pitch was a beauty. Looked like it was outside, but I guess barely in the zone. The former standout Yankee reliever, Chad Green, is in for Tampa Bay. With one out, he walks Dylan Carlson, so this means the tying run and the potential winning run are now on base. Now they're on the corners and two outs for Pablo Cairo, who has choked in some clutch situations today and once again will choke. Pablo Cairo has been outstanding this season, but when the lights shine the brightest, he is not at his best. I mean, he's only a 19-year-old kid, so I get it, but still would like to see him do better there. Top of the ninth, good inning from Suero as he strikes out Gary Sanchez and Renato Nunez as we go to the bottom of the inning. Jose Alvarado is in for Tampa Bay, and as you can see by his numbers, he's been the best reliever in baseball. 51 save opportunities. He has successfully gotten 50 saves and has a sub-0.8 ERA. It does not get better than that. Chances are Pittsburgh does not win this game, but all they need is one. And the leadoff batter, Francisco Mejia, rips a single. Bad throw in center. So Mejia will advance to second. Tampa Bay's defense was getting a little bit lazy. And now there's a runner in scoring position. Very bad error from Kevin Kiermeyer as Cabrian Hayes now up. That one deflects off of the leg of Jose Alvarado. And the pinch hitter Hayes is save at first. Jose Alvarado a little bit shaken up after that, unsurprisingly. Luckily, he would be able to stay in the game. But Pittsburgh now has two runners on base with no outs for Brian Reynolds. Unlike Pablo Cairo, Reynolds is actually really good in these clutch moments as this one is high and kind of deep into right. It will be caught by Austin Meadows. Mejia headed home. Bad throw by Meadows as that'll be a sacrifice fly. Pittsburgh is tied it up at two. Huge play right there. The question is, will we get a walk-off? Or will we get extra innings? Here's Josh Bell with two outs. This one is hit high and deep in a right field. Looks like it might have the distance of a track at the wall. And it is caught by Austin Meadows. That one was very close to ending this one. But we are headed to a 10th inning. The Fresh Prince of Pittsburgh, Will Smith, is now into the game. He's had a down year this season, but hasn't been terrible. Here's Kevin Kiermeyer, not known for his bat. Had the bad throw in the last inning, and he's going to make up for it here. A deep ball into right, his 10th home run of the season. So once again, we're back to square one. Tampa Bay is up by a run, as here is DJ LeMahieu now. Grounds this one. Benny Lane should have made the play. Instead, Cruz will instead, and LeMahieu is somehow out. Pittsburgh is awfully lucky. So we go to the bottom of the 10th. Alvarado is still into the game. Once again, the Pirates have to score one here. As Benny Ling swings way too late at the 99 mile an hour fastball. Alvarado throws gas, if you can't tell. Here's Dylan Carlson now with one out. Deep ball on the right, and it's gone. Again, Pittsburgh will tie it. Carlson's 24th of the season. Once again, that poses the question an 11th inning or a walk off? 
Can Pittsburgh finally end it as Alvarado's day is done? Jalen Beeks is into the game. He's had a very solid season. Here's Pablo Cairo, 1-2 pitch. Weak fly out. Should and will be caught by the third baseman, which means we are going to head to the 11th. Pittsburgh is hanging on for dear life right now as there is Austin Meadows striking out on the inside slider. Really nice pitch from Smith. Gary Sanchez now up. He goes deep into straightaway center. That ball is gone. So once again, Pittsburgh is down by one. This is deja vu. For the third straight time today, Pittsburgh is going to enter the bottom of the inning down by one where they have to shine. Let's see if third time's the charm for either team. Here's Brian Reynolds. The final hope for Pittsburgh. One-two pitch, and he swings way too early at the fastball. That's how this game ends. Tampa Bay wins a thriller in 11 innings. Your final 4-3 to three in a very pitchers-friendly duel, I guess you could say. The former Pirates played pretty well. Well, not Austin Meadows. He went 0-5 with three strikeouts. Bo Bichette, 2-4 for four with a pair of hits. And then Luzaro Armenteros did not play, so we did not get to see him. The pitching was very good for both teams. The Rays only had eight hits with four runs. Pittsburgh, meanwhile, only nine hits and three runs. And the stat that stands out to me the most, arguably the top five hitters on this Pittsburgh team in uh, O'Neill Cruz, Josh Bell, Benny Ling, Wander Franco, and Pablo Cairo went 0 for 18. Josh Bell did reach base twice with a pair of walks, but still... Those five cannot be going 0 for 18 if you want any chance of winning. So, I mean, the rest of the guys stepped up. Francisco Mejia probably is in that conversation of the top five hitter on our team. And then Carlson and Reynolds, they both stepped up as well. So that'll end the episode. Next one, we are going to finish out the regular season. We're also going to look at the AA and AAA championships. So next episode is going to be a very busy one, very exciting one. I hope you all are ready for that. Our final three series are a four-game set at home against the Reds, three games on the road against the Mets, and then four games on the road against the Cubs. The Reds and the Mets are not very good. We should win probably five of those seven games. And then the Cubs series, they are competing for a wild card spot. By the time we get to that series, they'll probably be eliminated, so I don't really know if they're going to be trying all too hard. Our Pirates have officially clinched a playoff spot for the third straight season, so now we just got to see if we're going to win the division for playing the wild card. Hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe. Deuces.